Today we're going to look at the TAC A3340. This is a four track quad reel to reel machine that can operate at 7.5 and, and 15 inches per second, which makes it a semi professional studio machine that would have been used by musicians in the day. And I had this unit given to me there a little bit ago, and uh, today we're going to see if we can actually make this thing work. Well, she's a thing of beauty. And the A3340 is going up on the workbench today. I want to see if I can get this old beast of a reel-to-reel -reel working. Now, this thing's got a few problems. This is my deck. I got this given to me. But as you can hear, we have we have some problems here. So before I even turn, power this thing up, I'm going to tear it down and we'll take a look and see what what's causing that to drag. That might even be part of definitely dragging in there. So let's get the back off this unit and take a look and see what's uh, going on inside it. Doesn't uh, sound good. Well, this thing's kind of a pigsty inside. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the air compressor going here. And I'm going to uh, blow this out. Uh, good chance I'm probably going to pop the circuit though. I turned on all the lights in here and I think when that compressor kicks in I'm probably going to draw a little too much power and I'm going to trip something but uh, let's see if I can blow the uh, the dust out here first. Now we can see that the uh, Supply side is, is rubbing. If I push the motor shaft through, it doesn't rub. So it appears to be more at the uh, actual front here. It appears to be more in here than it's dra dragging. So I'm just going to try taking the. Uh, well, this is loose. Somebody's had this apart. Take take the. Uh, the real table off and just see what is uh, under here that could possibly be dragging. Well that's smooth. What the heck? It's like this is actually dragging up against screws loose. I wonder if that's all it is. Let's just try tightening that up and grab a screwdriver. This screw is loose. You can see where it's been dragging on here too. Interesting. Wouldn't that be something if that's all that's dragging? On this, I'm sure there's more to that than that wrong with this, but would that be something if that's all it was? It's a, there's supposed to be a spacer by chance in there. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take the other one off. Look at that too and see if there's supposed to be like a washer in there that spaces this out. Just take this other one off on the other side and see if there's anything different. And you can see here if you look at the two reels. This is where it's been dragging. It's been it's been dragging on this screw here. This screw also looks like someone stripped it. And that might be where it's, it's just catching. Someone's tried to take those out. And uh, has, uh, has burred the top of them a bit. Huh. I can feel it here. I don't know if you can see it how well it shows on camera, but you can see where it's been dragging on here, right? And those tolerances are probably pretty, pretty, uh, pretty tight. I want to see if this thing even does anything. 
see if the motors work on here. So I've got power to it. Now, let's see here. I'm just trying to remember how these things work. I have uh, record off. Record off. I'm not, not that it matters, but um, if I pull this lever up. Okay, that's a good sign. The, uh, the pinch roller or the capstan motor is turning. Uh, how do I get this to go into play? I probably have to pull this down. Oh, got to have that in play. Okay. Ah, okay, that part works. Capstan stuck, or the pinch roller stuck. That needs to be, uh, okay, that works. The mechanism is gummed up here, but it uh, pulls. If I pull it up a bit, there, see, that works. So the mechanism's gummed, but that's a good sign. At least the motors turn. Capstan motor turns, how's the speed? Low speed. And high speed. I take it at seven and a half. Looks like it's seven and a half and fifteen IPS. Wow. Cool. Okay, we know that that part works, so I got my fingers crossed and I'm gonna get this sucker working. It looks it almost looks like if I look at the, the shaft here, if we look down here at the shaft, it looks like the uh, if you look at this one here, the shaft appears to be countersunk slightly on this one. And on this one here, it protrudes ever so slightly. So I think what's happened on here is, is this has this has pushed its way back. So I might be able to pull this forward. I think I probably have to heat that up though, and uh, heat up the, the actual swell of the aluminum here a bit to move this. I wonder what the best way to do that would be. Or maybe, I don't know what my heat gun. I bet you my heat gun would heat that up enough. That I could swell this up or expand the aluminum enough that I could pop this forward a bit so that I'm giving myself an extra uh, couple of, uh, of millimeters. Let's try that with the heat gun. Probably have to put the heat gun on full, full high heat for this and we'll just heat this thing up. See if I can heat the metal up enough that I can expand it so that I can actually pull it forward a bit. Oh, look at that. Unbelievable. It, that's all it took to bring this thing forward. You know what? There's a there's a lock screw in here. There's a lock screw in here. I can just I can feel it in the side here. So I'm gonna get an Allen key in there and see if I can tighten that up. tighter Let's see if we can get back in there again so here we go it's a 564 564 yeah 564 just tighten it up and now that's not going to move now we'll replace the spindles make sure everything turns freely I can almost hear the sound off this thing already. You know? Exciting times. I know that you guys are probably drooling over the this uh, tape deck. So let's uh, see how it uh, it runs now. Beautiful. Nice and quiet. Um, fast forward. Stop. Rewind.
stop and play. I don't know what this one does. I guess that doesn't do anything when it's in play. So now as you can hear, this thing is nice and quiet. What we need to do on it now is I'm going to have to, uh, before I do much on this, I'm just going to lubricate. I've got to get in there and see where it is. Lubricate that uh, the, the pinch roller and uh, then we'll put a tape on this thing and actually see if it makes any sound. So the solenoid that controls the pinch roller is back here and there's an arm that pivots down and it's attached right to this bracket which holds in place the, uh, the capstan shaft. As, as you can see this is turning freely. The belt is in good shape. So if I remove a couple screws here I should be able to remove this bracket and get in here to lubricate. This is the this is the arm here, the, the pivot point. So I should be able to, without too much difficulty, get in there and lubricate that bearing, which is gummed up. I think I can probably do it from the back here. Get to remove that wiring harness out of the way. Same with this one. And we'll put some oil in the motors while I'm at it. There's little, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's little, little dip tubes here on the top to oil the motors. This little, right on each side here, there's one there. There's one up here, little, little oil uh, holes, little tubes that you, you drop your lubricant in. To switch down here for 50 and 60 hertz. Uh, if anyone's wondering whether I'm going to recap this unit or not, uh, I'm not going to at this point in the game. That might be a future project. But I, what I'm interested in doing on this is just to get this mechanically working. If I can get this unit mechanically working, then I will look at uh, you know recapping it or something down the road if it needs it. It looks like this unit was serviced. Uh, when was it last serviced? May 1975, uh, got a date written on the back for the last place to service it. So 40 years ago, this thing was serviced. This is the um, this is the gummed up lever for the pinch roller, and the pinch roller just pivots on that. You can see, I move it, so I should be able to should be able actually to pull the capstan shaft out and lubricate that. All that. Let me just turn it around here and see if I can take, take that through. So I'm going to take the pinch roller off. So I'm just going to unscrew it. So there's the pinch roller. We'll just put that aside for now. And I should be able to pull the capstan shaft right through. I think it'll come out on this thing. If I take off the belt, I should be able to. They stick the belt. I should be able to remove the capstan shaft. Maybe not. Probably have to undo. I'm gonna undo three. Uh, I think I gotta undo three three screws, and we'll take the capstan uh, out so that I can get this pinch arm assembly out and uh, be able to uh, lubricate it properly. So there's three screws that have to come out to remove the actual capstan shaft. I don't want to drop any screws here. Make sure my screwdriver is magnetically charged. And now we should be able to pull this whole assembly out, if I'm not mistaken. Oops, I just took down a bracket, which I didn't plan on doing.
that's now through. And I dropped a bracket inside here somewhere. I gotta find it now. So that bracket goes in here like this. That's what goes around. That goes in here like that. That goes up against the the uh, the pinch roller assembly. Now I should be able to pull the pinch roller out if I'm not mistaken. I should be able to just lift this whole assembly away from the solenoid. I might not even have to remove this completely as I've been able to get some oil in here and now get the, the pinch roller uh, moving freely, as you can see. So I might not even have to take this down any further than this. I think I got this free enough. I was just able to get some oil into the bearing here, work its way along. I had my head in the way so I can't show you what how I was doing it, but this is nice and free now. So I think I think I dodged the bullet and I can work at putting the uh, the flywheel back in place here. This is gonna be a challenge on getting these getting these ones in place. Getting this bracket in place. Um, might want to lubricate this bearing while I've got it apart. Might not be a bad idea. Let's get some oil down into the bearing here. To that bearing it's spinning nice and smoothly as you can see I don't anticipate any problems with this this is going to be fun Let's see if I can get this through here in one shot I'm gonna put my screwdriver on the end of this and just try and get it in place uh, that didn't work we'll try that again okay I'm sorry I really couldn't show you guys how I got that thing in place because well it was not easy let's put it through that way Getting that uh, bracket in there with the three screws and fighting a losing battle with gravity. Uh, I finally used a piece of black tape to tape the bracket in place to hold it and then I was able to pull the tape out with needle nose pliers through the hole here. That's how I was able to actually get the, uh, the bracket back in place but I couldn't show you guys what I was doing because well I had to have the camera off when I was doing it. I, oh, I didn't have the camera off, it's just that I was standing in the way. So you really couldn't see a whole heck of a lot about what I was doing. But as you can see, this is now nice and smooth. My capstan shaft spins nicely. We'll put a bit of, uh, put the belt back on here. Looks to be okay, this belt. Nice and thick. Lots of tension. We'll put some. Uh, I guess we don't need to. That it's got grease on there now. It looks to be. It looks. It looks like it's okay. The grease on the back here. Looks to be okay. That grease. It's not dried up or anything. So I won't bother with that because that looks okay. We'll put the. Uh, screws back in here to hold this bracket in place. 
and that will complete part of this repair. So there's the bracket. Which side is up? This side. Side with the dust should be the side going up. Yeah, that'll be this side. I'm just looking at the way the uh, the paint was painted for the screws. With a little bit of luck, we might actually have some sound playing out of this thing this afternoon. I just had another plasma TV come in that was given to me. It may have a panel problem. It's apparently got a line on the screen. So it may be a bad panel. So maybe we'll give it a send off. Depending on how bad it is, it might be one that's okay for video games. So I'll make that determination when I get to it at some point in the future. We're going to lubricate the bearing for the pinch roller. Let's put a drop of oil on there. Pinch roller doesn't look to be in too bad a shape either. I need to lubricate this arm here. It's kind of sticking, but I think I can get at that from the back. Let me just put some oil into here. It's back here. The moment of truth. I like it. And the motor stops. Motor on. Motor off. Motor on. Let's uh, thread up a tape and see what it does. One has to. One has to love these professional reels. You just put your tape on here, and then just turn it, and tighten it up. Same with the dusty take-up reel. This has been sitting out in my workshop here forever. I have a nice metal reel on my other deck, so this is an old plastic reel. But hey, it'll do the job for testing. So we thread this up by going around this guide here. This is a tape tension arm. Around through here. I'm sure somebody will educate me on how to thread up a reel-to-reel -reel if they think they know better. Okay, tape is threaded and tape is plain. That would be seven and a half. This is just the leader here, so there's nothing here. Okay, here goes the sensing line for auto reverse. And and what happened there? It's uh, coming off the pinch roller here, or at least it did. May have been that uh, leader on there that was bad. So I don't, uh, I don't know what, if there's anything on this tape. It probably is. Oh yes, there's something on here. Controls probably need to be cleaned. But uh, I bet you this tape is recorded at three and three quarters and this is playing at seven and a half and I do that. Well, that's 15 IPS. 
Um, okay, let's, uh, let's hook this thing up to some sound and hook it up to some speakers and see if it uh, plays anything at all. Are we getting excited? I certainly am. Looks like there's only one. Uh, let's see here. Okay, front, rear. Okay, that's for the outputs for the headphones. Two channel play. Okay, there it is. Four channel. So there's that's why I had it in two channel mode. So you can see there actually is something recorded on the back side of that tape. And uh, let's um, let's hook it up to some speakers and see whether it does anything. Okay, this is hooked up. I don't know whether this tapes, it's probably three and three quarters. Let's just find out whether we hear anything. I would say it's in seven and a half. And I can't obviously let this play because I, I know what it is, it's Sting. The Sting, the Russian, so I can't let it play. But hey, it works. Let's clean the heads and see if we can get some half decent sound out of this thing. So I'll just remove the tape. And we'll just clean the heads down here. Oh yes, the heads are exceptionally dirty on this thing. Yeah, they're pretty bad. They're pretty bad. As you can see, this will have three heads. It'll have an erase and a record and a play. Give you guys a close-up of the... Oh, there's dirt on this too. Get to clean that. Give you guys a close-up of the head. So that's a four-track head. Get an erase head first. This is a combination record play because when you're in SimoSync, you're able to play back your previous track so you can hear it when you're recording another track over it. And then this is the dedicated playback head for once you've finished your recording session. So as you can see, it's been a while, I'm sure, since this was cleaned, and it's pretty bad. I have a feeling that will definitely affect the sound. No question that that will affect the sound. So we'll clean everything up here, and then we'll try this thing again, and I'll even try making a recording uh, on it. I'll go get a new tape, and we'll try recording some stuff. I'll have to try and get myself some uh, 10 inch reel adapters for this thing so I can try a 10 inch tape out. I'll have to get a 10 inch take up spool obviously and it's some um, reel adapters but that would be cool because you know you're, when you've got a deck of this caliber you just have to have a 10 inch reel on there right you can't do with the little the little 7 inch wheels those are those are consumer stuff got a pro deck to look professional you need to put the pro stuff on there Gotta have a 10 inch reel. This is pretty dirty. We'll clean that pinch roll or clean the caption as well. Okay. Let's uh, turn it back upright and thread it up and see if that makes a difference to the sound. So I need to uh, clean these controls. Love it. Fantastic. Pause. I want to go fast forward. There we go. Fast forward. Stop. Play. Oh, this must be the entire Sting album I've recorded. Sounds like Ten Summoner's Tales. I think that's what that one is. But yeah, it's working. It's great. What a score this one was.
to rewind. Kind of unique that you have to actually engage this switch first of all. It stops you from changing modes really quickly and possibly damaging the tape, which was some of the problems with some of the other machines that you're going to rewind and you, you stop it. You, you can hit play before the reels completely stop turning and really mess your tape up. So this having a two-step, if you're in fast forward, well, by doing that, it's going to stop it, right? So you basically have to do two, you can't just hit stop and then go. If you're, you're in fast forward, you have to hit stop, you have to switch it over and then play it, hit play. So just because of that, that's almost a, a, a two-step safety. So you're not going to be, uh, you can't rewind your tape or anything. All you can do is go forward. If you want to go into rewind, you have to switch this over. So that, that gives the machine time, no matter what you're doing, to stop the tape before you actually engage it. It's not possible to switch modes really quickly on this, which is good because, uh, again, open reel tape is very expensive and especially if a deck like this would have been used in a small recording studio, uh, would use something like this because uh, it's four track, right? So this decks like this quite often did find their way into actual professional recording studios. And with the 15 IPS, you got the sound quality that a recording studio required. Okay, that's that part done. I think we're going to clean up these controls on this machine. And that will call it a day on this deck. As you can see, my counter is working, so all the belts are working on here. That will call it a day on this deck for now. I just want to see what happens when it stops. It should automatically stop at the end. There we go. Does exactly what it's supposed to. It stops. So we're, let's clean the controls and then we'll uh, actually we'll put a blank tape on here and actually make a recording. So let me get the contact cleaner out. We'll clean all these controls and then we'll make a recording on this thing and see how good this thing sounds. Now being that this is such a great machine and it's my machine, it's going to get the good stuff. Deoxit. We're going to use the best stuff on this unit to get all these controls clean. And they're easy to get at too, which is nice. Because some decks, it's really hard to get into the controls, but not on this one. The controls are all open. And I can get in here with my can of deoxid. Let me just unplug it first so I don't short anything out with my watch. And we'll get in here and we'll clean all these controls up. A total of 12 controls that need to be cleaned. So you got the four line in, four mic in, and the four output playback controls. Do you want to get to the Simu Sync switches up top here? We'll give them a shot of cleaner as well. So we'll take off the, the head cover. get into these switches. And I'm going to use probably my Deoxit uh, D5 in the one shot just because this one has a tendency to spray everywhere. I don't want to get I don't want to get a bunch of spray in around the head so I'm going to get the other stuff out which has a little one shot uh, nozzle on it. So this stuff's better when you need to get in close because it doesn't spray everywhere. Okay, I think we'll try this thing for record now and see how it sounds. Okay, I can play this tape. This is uh, Music Bakery stuff. I recorded on my Akai 4000.
We'll do some recordings on this a little bit further down the tape. It sounds damn good, I'll tell you that. It sounds excellent. This is a brand new tape that has only been used like once or twice. New old stock. Just for the hell of it, I just did, as of now, while I'm listening to this, I just went onto eBay to see what an A3340 is going for, and broken A3340s have been selling for about $1,000 US for salvage. So uh, I would say that these things hold their value quite nicely. I'm not that I'm going to sell this one. This one's going to form part of my collection of reel-to-reels. I, I might unload some of my other ones. In fact, I probably will sell some of my other reel-to-reels, but along with my Akai GX260, uh, this one's going to be in my collection. I won't part with the GX260, and I won't part with this one, and I probably won't part with my Akai 4000 either. But uh, because I, I literally, I have hundreds of tapes that go back to the 1960s that uh, are full of really good stuff that I haven't transferred over to uh, I haven't transferred over to digital. Some of it's recorded at uh, three and three quarters, so I have to keep my Akai for that, as this one only has seven and a half and 15, but uh, definitely this thing's got great sound. That noise you hear, is this real? It's uh, got a crack in it, so the, it's wobbly, like it, uh, you can see it on camera there. Every time the tape goes around, it rubs against the tape, so that's just that reel that's causing that noise. So I've threaded up a tape here. I'm gonna do this at the faster speed. Um, we'll do this at 15 IPS. I believe I just hit the record button. I've already armed track one and two. I don't need to bother about track three and four. Actually, should I bother? This is most recorded half track. This is an old, a really old recording, so I might as well arm all four, just because uh, I might as well wipe the whole, might as well wipe the whole tape, um, because I don't know what's on the other side. It was this is an old recording that was recorded at. Uh, Somebody gave it to me. It was recorded with crap off the radio, so I don't need it. So I'll wipe all four tracks, just wipe the whole tape while I do this. So let's hit record and hit play, and then I'll start recording something here. Uh, where's my play button on this thing? I think. It's 
ancient tape. If I hit the, uh, we can hear it on playback. So this is the monitor button, right? I can actually put one on the source and one on the monitor, so we'll hear a bit of an echo here. And there's source, tape, and tape. Remember, I recorded this in 15 IPS, so this should sound pretty good. Well, it's probably close enough to the beginning. Oops, wrong button. Have to put it in play. We'll just. Uh, speed there it is it's working gotta like it Thanks for watching and we'll catch you again in the next one real soon.